In this video, we're going to go over the stereochemistry of the E2 reaction. So let's start with this example. Let's say we have 1 bromo, 2 methyl cyclohexane. And let's say that these two groups are cis with respect to each other. Now, if we react this alcohol halide with methoxide dissolved in methanol, what is the major product going to be? Feel free to pause the video and draw the major product for this reaction. Now, we need to determine if the double bond will form on that side or on the left side of the bromine atom. And so we need to draw the adjacent hydrogens. There's a hydrogen on the dash and a hydrogen on the wedge on this side. And on the other side, because the methyl group is on the wedge, the hydrogen's on the dash. Now, it's important to understand that the methoxide ion has to grab the adjacent hydrogen that's opposite to the bromine atom. So the bromine atom is on the wedge. So therefore, we can only abstract a hydrogen that is on a dash. So therefore, we can get a mixture of two products. The double bond can form here or here. So this is the first E2 product that we can get. Put in the double bond on this side. And we can also get this product. Now, which of these two products is the major product? The major product is going to be the Zeta product, which is the most stable alkene, and that is the most substituted alkene. So looking at this alkene here, how many other carbon atoms are attached to those double bonded carbon atoms in red? There's only two other carbon atoms, and so this is a di-substituted alkene. It has two R groups. And for this one, notice that there are three carbon atoms attached to the, the red double bonded carbon atoms. And so therefore, this is a tri-substitute alkene. Tri-substitute alkenes are more stable than di-substitute alkenes. So this is going to be the major product. That is the Zetev product. Whereas this one is the minor product, also known as the Hoffman product. And so based on this specific stereoisomer, we can get a mixture of two products. Now let's say if we have a different stereoisomer. So let's say the bromine is still in the front, but this time the methyl group is in the back. So what product can we get if we use methoxide and methanol? So first let's draw the hydrogen atoms. So we have an H in the front, and over here we have two hydrogen atoms. Now, because the bromine atom is on the wedge, we can only remove the hydrogen that's opposite to the bromine atom, and that is the hydrogen on the dash. We cannot remove this hydrogen. So therefore, we're only going to get one product. So the base is going to come in, grab the hydrogen, form a pi bond, kick out the leaving group. So the major product in this reaction will be this alkene. So we only get the Hoffman product in this case. So keep that in mind. When dealing with the E2 reaction, the hydrogen and the leaving group, they have to be anti with respect to each other. They have to be on opposite sides. Now, let's consider another example. So let's say if we have a molecule like this, where the hydrogen and the bromine atom are opposite to each other, that is, they're anti to each other, they're 180 degrees apart, and we have these other groups on it. So let's react to this particular stereoisomer with methoxide. So draw the elimination product that will form from this stereoisomer. Now, we know that methoxide is going to grab the hydrogen, form a double bond, kicking out the bromine atom. And so we are going to lose these two groups. 
and we're going to get a double bond between the two carbon atoms. Now, for the carbon on the left, there's a methyl group and an ethyl group. Initially, we don't have to worry about how we're going to put them because there's only two ways. So we can put them any way on the first carbon. Now the second carbon is where we have to be careful. So notice that the methyl groups are on the same side. They are both on the dash. So if this methyl group is on the top, the other one has to be on the top as well. Now the hydrogen atom is on the same side as the ethyl group. They're both on the wedge. And since the ethyl group is on the bottom, the hydrogen has to be cis with respect to it or on the same side as it. And so we're going to get this particular alkene. And this is going to be the E isomer because the highest priority groups are opposite to each other. Now let's try another similar example. So once again, the H and the Br groups will be opposite to each other. If they're not, you may need to rotate this molecule so that they're anti with respect to each other. And once they're anti, you can easily determine which alkene will be produced from this particular molecule. So let's react it with methoxide. So let's start with the CC double bond. Feel free to pause the video, by the way, and determine which alkene we're going to get. Is it the E isomer or the Z isomer? So let's focus on the carbon on the left. We're going to lose the hydrogen and the bromine atoms, so we're not going to worry about that. So this carbon is going to have the methyl and the phenyl group. I'm going to put the methyl group on the bottom and the phenyl group on top. Now, notice that the phenyl groups are on opposite sides of each other. This phenyl group is on the wedge. This one is on the dash. So therefore, they're trans with respect to each other. And the same is true for the methyl groups. One is on the dash, the other is on the wedge. So the methyls, they're on opposite sides of each other. Now in this example, the highest priority groups are on opposite sides. So once again, we have the E isomer. Now let's say if you're given a Newman projection, which looks like this. So here we have a hydrogen. And here we have a methyl group and a phenyl group another hydrogen atom, and then here's the bromine atom, and then a methyl group. So let's say we react this with methoxide, a strong base. What type of alkene will we get? Will it be the E isomer or the Z isomer? So just like before, we're going to lose the hydrogen and the bromine atom. Now this carbon is basically the front carbon, and the one behind it we can't see, that's in the back. So let's start with our carbon-carbon double bond. So I'm going to make this the front carbon. So attached to the front carbon, we have a methyl group and a phenyl group. So I'm going to put the methyl group on the top and the phenyl on the bottom. You could do it the other way, too, um, if you want to. But here is the important part. Notice that the methyl groups are on the left side. Because they're on the same side, when you draw your alkene, they should be on the same side. If this methyl group is facing, if it's on the top side of the alkene, then this one should also be on the top side as well. The phenyl and the hydrogen atom, they're on the same side, the right side. So thus, they have to be cis with respect to each other. Now looking at these two, the methyl and the phenyl, they are on opposite sides. So we can see that here. These two are on opposite sides. So if they're on the same side, they're going to be cis with respect to each other. And if one is on the left and the other is on the right, then they're trans with respect to each other. Now the last thing we need to do is determine if we have the E isomer or the Z isomer. So if we compare the methyl and the phenyl groups, the phenyl group has more priority. And then between the methyl and the hydrogen, the methyl has more priority. So the highest priority groups are on opposite sides. So once again, we have the E isomer. Now let's look at one more example. We 
go ahead and try this one. Feel free to pause the video. So we could eliminate the hydrogen and the bromine. And then attached to the first carbon, we have a methyl group and a phenyl group. Now, notice that this phenyl group is on the right side, and this one is also on the right side. So they're cis with respect to each other. So if this phenyl group is on the bottom, the other one has to be on the bottom on the other side, which means the hydrogen has to be here. So therefore, the highest priority groups are on the same side, which means that we have the Z isomer.